GIMP, in and of itself already a very powerful image editing program. But one of the hallmarks of powerful software is the fact that they can be easily extended, and GIMP is no exception. Today, we're going to look at an extremely powerful plugin for GIMP called GMIC. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So here's how this episode is going to play out. First, I'm going to show you, you know, what you need to install and how you can do that. That's not very difficult, so we'll rapidly move on to a showcase of some of my favorite GMIC effects. I'm going to break the showcase down into two parts. First, a set of more serious effects, and then a set of more fun effects. And this will serve to give you an idea of how good this plugin actually is. So with that said, let us begin with the installation instructions. First and foremost, before you begin with anything, you will of course need a copy of GIMP. So make sure you do have that, you do have it installed correctly. If you don't, simply pop open the video description, you will find all the links you need there. GIMP can be installed with an installer, so that should be very intuitive. Just go ahead and click your way through. If you are using the installer for GMIC, then the installation process is very simple as well. Just one thing to note, since this is a plugin for GIMP, it does need to know where the GIMP directories reside. If you have not changed the default directory for GIMP, then you don't have to worry. The installer will be able to find your GIMP installation. So yeah, very simple, very intuitive. Once you're done with all the installation steps, pop into GIMP and in the menu bar, go to filters and look near the bottom of the list. If GMIC is shown there, then you're good to go. You're ready to begin using this very powerful plugin. So with that said, let us jump into our showcase. We're going to begin with a set of serious effects, so to speak. These are things that are really powerful and really useful that go beyond the default capabilities of GIMP. Many of these are effects I actually use because, well, it's just that useful. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is a sharpening function. To access this, go ahead and open GMIC. You can click on the full screen button on the lower right to, you know, make the window larger. Then go to details and select sharpen, the blur. The sharpening algorithm here is extremely effective. It can even counter things like slight motion blur. It is also highly customizable in the sense that it has both a sharpening and a smoothing feature. Chances are the sharpening is going to make things look very unnatural, which is why the smoothing is there. This smoothing isn't just a trivial blurring of the image. Instead, it actually tries to keep some of the edges sharp. So yeah, the overall effect is very pleasing. What I like to do after this to sort of seal the deal on making the effect look really realistic is to actually scale the image down a little. This actually blends in those patches and makes them look even less conspicuous. So yeah, this is definitely a very useful sharpening tool. Moving on, let us look at color grading. To access this effect, go to colors, color grading. Now, as you can see, there are many controls for this effect. So yeah, it is a highly customizable effect. Not only does it allow you to play around with color, it even allows you to do things like sharpening, tone mapping, and noise removal. So yeah, tone mapping in particular is a very powerful tool. It can actually make, you know, the brightnesses in your image look more even. And more importantly, it enhances the contrast of the image. There is a world of different things you can do with this plugin, so experiment with all the sliders and you'll find something you like. If you find this effect a little bit too pronounced, like I find myself overdoing the colors a lot of the time, you can use this neat little trick. And that is to go copy, undo, paste. What you've basically done here is you have taken a copy of the affected layer and layered it on top of the original unaffected version. So what you can do now is you can go to the upper layer and play around with its opacity. This allows you to tweak up the effect to make it more subtle if you need it to be. And this is very useful because it doesn't recompute the whole effect. It is just a blending computation, so it's very fast. Let us now move on once again to one of the most interesting effects in this entire package. This is called upscaling and it can be found under the repair menu. 
Upscaling refers to scaling up an image and doing some computation to make it still look sharp. On line art, particularly line art with very sharp edges, this algorithm is perfect. You cannot tell if you've actually upscaled something. And the reason for this is because the artifacts you get out of this are actually what appears to be little patches. When used on a photo, the patches are visible, but chances are they are very subtle. And you can tweak up the settings to make them look as subtle as you like. What I like to do is I like to upscale it a little bit more than I need to, and then scale it back down in GIMP using filtering. When you do this, just like in sharpening, you actually smooth out some of the patches, and that actually looks really good. Of course, it's not going to magically gain you extra resolution out of thin air, but this is a very good alternative to that, and I think it's one of the best upscaling techniques I have seen. Finally, for the last of our serious effects, this is the Make Seamless option in GMIC. You can find it under the Array and Towels menu. Of course, the idea of Make Seamless is that once a picture has been made seamless, it can be towed, and it looks okay. The technique used by GMix Make Seamless function is actually extremely interesting. It does not change up the image at all. All it does is it modifies the intensity of light at the edges of the image, and basically it does that so that when the images are towed, you don't see an obvious seam, because the seams come from a difference in lighting. As you can see in this example, Notice that the geometry hasn't lined up at all. Nothing has been done to the pebbles in the image to make them look like they'll connect together. But because their relative brightness have been equalized, they seem to fit together quite well. This of course is in contrast to the built-in make seamless function, which you can find in the GIMP filters. What that version does is it actually does some kind of blending. And what that means is when you use that, you can actually see some parts where the geometry fades from one version to another. Sure, it's not as bad as having an actual seam there, but when using an image like the one I'm using now, the difference is still jarring. So yeah, the technique used by GMIC in its make seamless function is less intrusive and actually very smart. So now that the serious stuff is out of the way, let's look at the more fun stuff. In fact, two of these are just filters. They're just things to make your image look, I guess, fancy. So let's start with a vintage style filter, which you can find under the colors menu. As you can imagine, all this filter does is it sort of washes out your image. What's really cool is this plugin is already perfect on its default settings. Of course, you can change up the color and, you know, just have a feel of what this plugin can do in weathering your images. One point to note, I actually experienced an out of memory error when running this plugin on a full resolution photo, so you might want to scale things down first, or alternatively, you might want to get the 64 bit version of GIMP and GMIC. I haven't tested this, but I believe that if you use a 64 bit version, you should be able to allocate as much memory as you have. Moving on, we have the bokeh effect, which you can find under the artistic menu. This just layers little bokeh balls or lens flares on your image. This is a very popular look, I see it being used a lot these days. So yeah, if you want to join in on that trend in your images, so yeah, if you want to join in on that trend in your images, you can. Finally, this last one is actually very interesting. It is a method to place an invisible watermark in your image. To do this, go to Frequencies, Fourier Watermark. Basically, what this effect does is it converts your image to the frequency domain, changes up the image slightly in a frequency domain to layer on a watermark, and then changes it back to the spatial domain. What this means is, ultimately, all this plugin has done is it has rearranged some of the noise in the image to actually form a meaningful watermark. To reveal your watermark later on, go to Frequencies, Fourier Analysis, and basically run that and you will actually see a visual representation of the frequency information of your image, and with it, your watermark in the upper left corner. So actually, this is a very interesting effect, but unfortunately, it's placed in a fun category instead of the serious one, because it is very easy to actually break this watermark. You see, your watermark is embedded in the highest detail areas of the image. However, that is also what a lot of operations actually destroy. 
For example, when you do JPEG encoding, when you save the image to JPEG, the highest frequencies are the ones that get removed the most when it comes to compression. Other operations like blurring and scaling also affect those the most. So unfortunately, this effect is more of a fun thing. Unless you're going to be distributing your image in an uncompressed fashion, then this might not be the most practical way of doing things. However, you know it's there. So yeah, if you ever need to use this, you know where to look for it. So yeah, we've actually spent a lot of time looking at just seven of the effects in the whole GMIC repository. As you can see, there are lots of effects in this plugin. So do take some time out and actually, you know, experiment with the different effects. Like I said, this is a very powerful plugin. It is something that I have been using myself for practical purposes. And that's why I say this is definitely a good tool to have which is why, well, I'm doing this video in hopes that you'll actually download it and use it yourself. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on photography and image editing subjects. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.